Shakalaka. Yo, ho! Welcome back, friends, to the Ultimate Warriors podcast, part of the Mark One Sports Network. We are bringing you everything Cleveland Cavaliers and really everything uh, NBA in general. I'm Ben Christopher. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host Teddy Too Cool for School, Mr. Teddy Ballgame. How you doing, Tedster? Hey, I'm doing all right. I had a little uh, COVID scare this weekend with my roommate, but turns out he just had some sand in his vagina, so we're we're all good. I know you've had that a few times yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I have. <laughs> well, that, I'm, I'm glad that you're doing well because I think most of Cleveland is pretty depressed today. We've had a few uh, shitty yeah. teams here in Northeast Ohio. And, you know, the Cavs haven't been able to play because of COVID. You just mentioned that. Uh, the Browns, they lost a very close game to the Chiefs. And we also found out uh, early on Monday morning that the Cavs are going to be getting away from uh, talented youngster Kevin Porter Jr. So just a whole bunch of crap going on over here. And we're going to talk about all those things in detail as we go through the show, but we have another guest join us today, and I would introduce him, but he's so good at introducing everyone. He usually intros our show. I'm just going to let him introduce himself. Take it away. Yo, what's good? It's Andy Smith, Mr. Man of Myth. I'm coming to you live and direct and in full effect. I'm here with Ben and I'm here with Teddy. We broadcasting the best podcast live. Are you ready? We got NBA Jam in the back. You know we straight attack. Cleveland in the building. MGK, where you at? Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, of course, is our third Ultimate Warrior DJ, Andrew Smith. And and, you know, I mentioned that there's been a lot of uh, stuff going on in Cleveland, but I don't know if you heard about the Cavs' legal troubles. Tell me if you've heard about this, Andy. Some of the uh, team members, they've been calling our backcourt of Colin Sexton and Darius Garland. They've been calling it Sexland because, you know, you just kind of combine those. But there's one big problem with that. That's that Teddy, he already has trademarked Sexland as a name for his downtown apartment. So yep. I don't know if you heard about that. that that's making big news over here. Yo, I, I, the only thing I heard about, I, he- I heard he, he gives out to the hottest girls in Cleveland. He gives them like a fa- Disney fast pass. So they get to go to the front of the line. So these girls get these exclusive passes, and it's just a picture of Ted's face. And whenever they go to his apartment building, they just wave it, and they get to cut the line of whores, and they go in a back alleyway, and they go up the steps. And they get, they get early access, you know, to the sexting. But I, I love that. I love that term. I think that's hilarious. Sex line. You guys know I'm waiting for marriage. So. Yeah. yeah. We, we all know. We all know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, let, let's get started. And we should talk about the most recent news. So Kevin Porter Jr. And, and first off, I was really excited about this kid coming into the season. You know, towards the end of last season, he looked really, really good. He actually looked like he might have been our best a uh, young player, and really certainly a key to our future. So we talked on this show a lot about, you know, what that starting guard rotation was going to look like with him and, you know, Sexland, who we just talked about, those two guys. Um, and, you know, I thought that Porter might even take one of those starting spots, but he, Kevin Porter made that a lot easier to figure out that rotation for our coaching staff when he was arrested for having guns and marijuana in his car uh, right before yeah. the season started. And he's been healthy, but he hasn't played a single game this this year due to personal reasons. I think most people think it's related to that incident somehow. Well, Friday, this is the guy's first first time back with the team, first game. And he, he didn't suit up. He just came to join the team, get used to the guys. And <laughs> this is hilarious. He gets pissed <laughs> off. He gets pissed off. It, it, Kevin Porter Jr. finds out that his locker has been moved. Uh, because we recently made a trade, which we're going to talk about. And Terry and Prince, they gave Terry and Prince, the new uh, Cavalier, his locker. And they moved uh, Porter's locker over to some young, near some younger players, which kind of cracked me up because he's only 20 years old. So I don't know how you get a whole lot younger than that. But, yeah, Prince, you know, he's 26. He was a big part of the, the Nets team. He was a big part of the Hawks team. So – he got really upset about that. Apparently, he was screaming at some of the Cavaliers staff, and he actually threw some food at them. 
So he was basically having a food fight in the locker room. And Andy, I'm going to ask you first, what is it with the Cleveland Cavaliers locker room and people throwing food around? I don't know if you remember, J.R. Smith once threw a bowl of soup at somebody on the Cavs staff. So I don't know if you heard about that, but yeah, there, there's something going on with, with the food there in Cleveland. They, they must not be getting their food from Wahlburgers, as owned by Mark Wahlberg and Associates. The food must be hot shit is the only thing I could imagine is why you would want to take food and chuck it in any sort of a direction. But I was just I was just reading on the TMZ report for the the NBA Kevin Porter Jr. gun and weed charges. It said they got dropped, but they were in his car. Um, I don't know. So I, I know I know different gun laws and I know. There's certain states where you can't have guns. Cleveland's a super tricky one if you're driving with a loaded firearm. If you don't have a concealed carry, so you can get F in the A real quick. And he probably didn't know that. Um, so that's just bad, bad, bad. So I have no sympathy. And he's wasting food. Who, who does that? I, I don't agree with that. I know Ted would never waste food. He he freely gives hot dogs out to any girl, any girl who wants it. Hot dogs galore. Foot you know. longs. Foot longs. <laughs> foot longs. I call them brats. <laughs> brats. <laughs> I heard they're. I heard they're also called big uglies because they look like a, a deformed hamburger that they. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so I, I was bummed out. Like I said, you know, I, I had. I just had such high hopes for this kid, and you know, I have a little bit of sympathy. Because it would be kind of shitty if somebody moved your locker without talking to you about it. Um, I mean, you definitely want to know. And we can't forget, this kid's 20 years old. I was doing a lot of stupid crap when I was 20 years old. So, you know, I give him a little bit of sympathy. But, you know, these guys, they know they're coming into the NBA. They're making millions of dollars. I just, I don't know, if I was 20 years, years old making millions of dollars, I'd be like that movie Richie Rich where he's putting, like, roller coasters in his backyard. But... I don't Ted, any thoughts for you on that? Yeah, I mean, you just hate to see it. When he came out in the draft, I mean, that was the big question mark with him is if he was going to be able to stay out of trouble um, because he does have so much talent. Um, so I don't think the Cavs are going to give him much of a leash when it comes to this stuff, just knowing his history. Right. Um, but I hope we don't just get rid of him for nothing because he is super talented and if nobody wants to give us anything, I'd rather keep them on board, honestly. Yeah, it's – I wouldn't want to give him away either. I mean, he's he's 20 years old. He showed a lot of flashes last season. Yeah. But at this point, you just can't have him in the locker room. So, I don't <laughs> he's know. He's only 20. He can't even buy a beer. I, I know. I know. That's why he's out smoking that Mary Joanna, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but – Hey, that kind of leads us into really what was the biggest story for the NBA this week, and that's the James Harden trade. Um, obviously, I mentioned that Torian Prince was somebody that came to the Cavs from that trade. Ted, do you mind real quick just kind of walking us through what that looked like? Yeah, I can walk us through. Uh, it's not going to be real quick, though, because there was quite a bit of moving <laughs> parts. <laughs> True. I'll, just go, uh, I'll go team by team here. Um, so the Nets obviously got James Harden. And they got the Cavs 2022 second round pick. And then the Cavs, you mentioned Torian Prince. We got him and we got yep. Jared Allen. And then the Pacers worked their way in there. They got uh, Karis LeVert and then a Houston 2023 second round pick. Yeah. And then Rockets came away with a, just a ton in this trade. They got Victor Oladipo, Dante Exum. Rodon's Curix. I don't even know how to pronounce his name correctly. Nobody does. His mom doesn't even know how to pronounce it. <laughs> and then they got uh, Brooklyn's 2022, 2024, and 2026 unprotected first-round picks. Yeah. As well as pick swaps for all the um, years in between there. So 2021, 23, 25, and 27. But who, what and team then, got that? What, what team got that? Uh, the Rockets for Harden. That's really, Which, that's really good. And they got a Cavs 2022 first rounder from Milwaukee. That's so it's not really ours, good. it's Milwaukee's, but we had it. So Yeah, that doesn't they bother me. With, they came away with a ton. Yeah. So yeah, it kind of so it reminds me, uh, you know, I hope uh, you know, for Kyrie, I, if you guys know me, I've got a big fat head of him on the wall over here. I, I hope that this goes smooth. I'm a little bit worried for him. 
Um, but I love this trade for Cleveland. We got Jared Allen. He uh, ranked last season in the top 15 of defensive field goal percentage at the rim. And he averaged nearly half a block more than the starting center of that team, DeAndre Jordan, who's known for being a rim protector. And he's only 22 years old. So I think he can continue to grow with this young Cavs squad. It's also good insurance for us uh, in case this offseason Andre Drummond leaves. He's been absolutely incredible for the Cavs this year. I just don't know if we're going to want to pay him what he's going to want. And that's somebody that can grow with these guys. So I really like that. And we also really needed uh, some wings. We've talked about it a lot on this show. And bringing Prince in, you know, he's a veteran. He's played in playoff games. I think uh, getting him really is a bonus. I think if you just get Allen, you're, you do good here. So bringing right. him in, someone that's going to give us good wing minutes, I really like it. And, you know, Dante Exum, we traded him. He was never going to play much for this team. We have too many point guards already, especially with the Sexland backcourt. Um, <laughs> I keep saying that now. It's just so much easier. <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah, like with those two guys, and he just was never going to get a lot of minutes. And you mentioned, Ted, that, that 20, uh, 22 pick – if Giannis wouldn't have signed his extension, we right. probably would have wanted to keep that because Milwaukee could have really, <laughs> really went, went yeah, down the shitter uh, if Giannis left. But with him signing that extension, it's not going to be a very good pick. So I, right. I love it for Cleveland. A- Andy, what do you think about it for the Nets? Do you like it for them? Yeah, I think the, the, the people that came out on top of this entire trade are strippers in Brooklyn. <laughs> Strippers in Brooklyn are celebrating like crazy because they know James Harden throws huge stacks of cash, not as much as Teddy Teddy Ballgame does, but huge stacks of cash on whores. And now Brooklyn is the place to be if you're strippers. So Brooklyn made out the Brooklyn strippers made out like bandits. So I, I think I think they came away with it. I'm nervous about Kyrie because I'm the same as you guys. I really do like Kyrie. Um, Here's, he's a weird fella. Very. A weird fella. <laughs> yeah. um, to say the least. He's, he's very – and, and the thing is, he's, he's, he went to Duke, so he's no dummy. So he's, he's like an intellectually weird fella. So he could, like, he could legit, like, F off and, and be fine the rest of his life. I'm sure financially he could. But he's, like, maybe weird in the sense where it's like, you know, I'm seeing stuff like he's not interested anymore and he doesn't want to do this and – Listen, if I had the amount of money that, like, Ted or, you know, <laughs> Kyrie had, I mean, Lord knows where your mind would be wandering. So that's my only concern is he may just become non-interested and then just, like, fade away. That's my only concern. But <laughs> strippers and whores, uh, they did the best <laughs> in Brooklyn. I, that's a great take. They certainly did. And I, so I mentioned it, you know, Kyrie, he, he's a goofy dude, but – He's just always going to be a part of Cleveland history. So yep. I just, I, he, you know, he left here on very bad terms, but I, I've always like, I don't know, kind of want to see him do okay. But in the first game uh, with Harden and KD, James Harden goes off for a triple double. Kevin Durant scores 42 points and the Nets win, but there is no Kyrie Irving. So yep. just think about this for a <laughs> second. So those two, James Harden and Kevin Durant, they took 44 shots. All right. That's a lot of shots. DeAndre Jordan, their starting center, he had two points on two shots. So they had over half the shots for their team. I don't know where all Kyrie's shots are going to come from. And Kyrie (laughs) left Cleveland because he wanted his own team. And he's the third guy on this team now that Harden's there. Uh, And he, you know, he scores well with the ball. He's a great shooter. He can play a little bit of off ball, but he's most effective with the ball in his hand because he's got great handles. So... Yeah. I'm just really interested. This is going to be fun to watch. Harden, Kyrie, Durant, they're all just known to have these, like, they're, they're just known to be bad in the locker rooms, have big egos. And, you know, of course, they're going to be fine and dandy, but if they start losing, this is going to be really fun to watch. Nice. So I'm interested to, to check that out. <laughs> do you see – how far do you see them going? Realistically, I can't see them going past the conference finals. There's no way in God's green earth. No Conf- way. Conference finals, yeah. Conference finals, that's it. Yeah, I think they, they're going to they no win the East, guys. I think they're going to win the East. Of course you do. <laughs> That's too much talent. Unless Kyrie does go crazy and does something like retire, like some people have uh, mentioned recently. I think Stephen A. was saying he thinks Kyrie should just retire, well, <laughs> which is crazy because he's, what, 26 or something? 
Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, he's young for sure. I, what I'm really worried about is, you know, Kevin Durant was always a good teammate until Draymond Green called him a bitch. So hopefully Draymond nobody Green. on the uh, on the Nets calls him any bad words because then he'll he'll just, you know, get butt hurt. Draymond Green is a bitch. Fucking donkey <laughs> from Shrek ass looking. I can't stand his ass. He sucked. <laughs> and Kevin Durant was the only reason that team won, like, the Warriors did. That's, he's the only yeah. reason. That, if he was not on the team, he would not win anything. So that was like a cheat code that they had. And then Draymond Green blew it. They'll never win again. The Cavs were the three-peated, for sure. Easily. Easily. Oh, yeah. And Kyrie you probably won't Make sure you wear a cup when you're playing Draymond Green because he'll kick you in the ball. <laughs> Oh, he's got the the record for most kicks in the balls. <laughs> Already. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, before before we move on, I should mention we are part of the Mark One Sports Network. We've got a lot of shows. We've got the Danger Zone. The Cleveland Browns won their first playoff game since 1994 against the Pittsburgh Steelers a few weeks back. And I know we just lost to the Chiefs, but it's still an awesome season. So make sure to check out what those guys have to say. We've got CLE Tribecast for Jeremy and Kevin. They keep you up to date on everything Cleveland Indians. We've come close to World Series championships the past few years, at least making deep playoff runs. So they're going to let you everything, let you know everything that the Indians need to do to actually win one. And then there's the Mark One Sports Show where Ethan, he covers it all, news, sports, movies, whatever's going on, he talks about it. He also does Moneyline DFS, free fantasy advice. He's winning some money. Why not get some free advice? Ted, did you play any fantasy over the weekend? How'd you do? No, I did not do fantasy this weekend because I was drinking too much alcohol this weekend. <laughs> so I didn't want to put any money out there. But yeah, if you like Moneyline DFS, you guys should check out Thrive if you haven't already. Uh, and if you use our promo code MARK1, uh, it's going to double that deposit you put down of at least 20 bucks. So how's your fantasy team looking? Undefeated. Undefeated fantasy team, Ted. I, I'm not losing this year. <laughs> your team is pretty good, actually. I didn't want to say they're they're very good. Well, hey, so I just I just kind of mentioned that the Browns lost uh, this game, and it was a bit of a heartbreaker. But we actually have someone who's unbiased on this show. Obviously, we're we're big Cleveland sports fans, big Browns fans. Andy lives in Pittsburgh. He loves the Cavs. Biggest Cavs fan in Pittsburgh. I say it all the time. But Andy, what did you think about that Browns game? Well, as you know, I was obviously a fan of you guys, and obviously I will be rooting for the Browns. Uh, when they beat the Steelers, which I'm fine with. That's cool. I was pumped for you guys. That one play was one of the darkest things I've ever seen in my entire life, where basically close enough to being a touchdown, in my opinion. Helmet to helmet. So I don't know if you know this. Illegal. Um, <laughs> naughty, and, naughty. <laughs> naughty, naughty. And they just <laughs> let it slide. They're like, you know what? That's fine. <laughs> it's not a big deal. If they would have done something where – I mean, okay, you should have called helmet to helmet. That's a fact. They didn't call helmet to helmet. So you didn't call helmet to helmet. At least give them the ball at the one-yard line because it was completed and whatever. Give it to them at the one-yard line, the half-yard line. They deny it. And I don't want to say it because I always say it. NFL's rigged. I'm saying it right now. (laughs) They do not want the dog pound. They do not want Cleveland there. You mean they, you mean they don't want them there? You mean to tell me that a Cleveland versus Buffalo AFC championship game <laughs> isn't going to draw big ratings? Listen, we <laughs> know everybody loves the Browns now. Here's the thing: I am from Pittsburgh. I care for the Browns. The only people I hate are murderers, aka the Ravens. So <laughs> I am rooting for you guys. I'm sure everybody's rooting for you guys. The dog pound everything. Here's the thing. The only person in commercials is your quarterback. Now, Kansas City, they have uh, their quarterback. He's in commercials. They're just – it's more – but he's in commercials with Aaron Rodgers. So, (laughs) here's the thing, and I I go deep down the conspiracy hole on a daily basis. Here's what I heard. Before the season started – and I will make this short. Before the season started, this guy posted this link. He said, listen – He said, I do graphic design, and I go on this website where people show different graphic designs, and they ask for critiques and, like, what do you think, or they get inspiration for them. This guy presented the Super Bowl, this current year's Super Bowl logo with the um, Green Bay Packers and with the uh, Chiefs logo on it before the season started. 
And the guy goes, that just seems interesting that the guy would do that as a graphic design. No, it wasn't just like me or you like, hey, let me like play with the logo or whatever. This person is certified working with the NFL, and he did this before the season even started. <laughs> So I'm saying right now it's completely rigged. Take it to the bank. Take your Mark One Sports Cast. Go to your bookie. Say, hey, I'm putting my entire mortgage on the fact that it will be Green Bay and it will be the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. You can quote me on that. What if Mahomes doesn't play though? He's in concussion protocol right now. Ah, uh, they'll throw in a clone. They have those on. They have those on the. <laughs> that's an, that's a, that's another conspiracy. <laughs> I'll just throw a clone of him. So, so what about what about some of these stats? So, so you mentioned uh, you think that Green Bay is winning from, from the other side. You don't yep. think Tom Brady's going to have anything to, to say about? No, that. he's going to be too busy kissing his son. Well, li- listen to this. I, I saw some of these stats earlier. So, Tom Brady has beaten eighteen different teams in the playoffs. That's by far a record. Eighteen wow. different teams. Uh, so, Tom Brady played all of his uh, NFL career in the AFC until. This past season, he's beaten eight NFC opponents because of the Super Bowls in this year. Drew Brees, who's a legendary quarterback, he's only beaten 18 NFC opponents, and he's in the NFC his whole career. Wow. Tom Brady has 13 playoff winning drives, game winning drives, 13 of them. He's only lost 11 times in the playoffs. He has more game winning drives than losses. So, Absolutely crazy. I don't know. I just those are just some nut stats. But well, who Ben? Who who are you liking? What what what's your what's your Super Bowl picks? Ah, uh, I'm just gonna go the opposite because why not? Like you know, you guys hate Tommy Terrific because he used to beat the Steelers um, every time. Every I, time we originally hated him because he was from Michigan, but then right. he started beating the Steelers and we couldn't do that. We couldn't figure out how to do it, so we're like, you know what? Yeah, that guy's got cool hair. We'll go with him. <laughs> Teddy, what about I, think, you? I think I'm going with the Packers. Uh, I'll go Packers Bills is who I want to see. I would love to see the Bills there. I'd I want to see Rodgers get I want to see Rodgers get another Super Bowl. He he deserves one. He's he's been the GOAT for a long time and he only has the one. So I'm rooting for him. Yo, he banged Olivia Munn. Nobody forgets. So that's <laughs> that's the <laughs> Super Bowl in my book right there. But dude, that yeah, that Browns game, that rule where if the ball that rolls out of the end zone, it goes to the other team. It made there is no way they were recovering that ball. Like we had a guy who almost <laughs> got to it out of bounds. Yeah. Like, it, and it doesn't if you fumble the ball out of bounds anywhere else in the field, it, it stays with you. So I don't know. I guess I don't get it. I don't, I'm not a big football guy. I like to watch the Cleveland Browns, but uh, that's really I, I I've been I'm I'm gonna have nightmares about that play for a long time. I don't. I don't even want to. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> well, overall, first playoff win since 1994. You've got to consider that a good season. And I happen to think those Baker Mayfield commercials are pretty funny with the at home and uh, with oh. Baker Mayfield. So <laughs> I do like those. But let, let's move on uh, and let's talk here for a minute about what else is going on with the Cleveland Cavaliers. So they only had two games uh, since we recorded previously. On Friday, they announced that. Sunday night and Monday night's games were postponed. And that's because the Washington Wizards, who we played in both of those two games, they didn't have eight people that could suit up. And oh, that's wow. a league minimum. You have to have eight players that can suit up. And they had too many people on COVID protocol because of all this COVID tracing. So they actually couldn't, uh, they, they couldn't play the games. So the Cavs haven't played. Uh, we'll be back against the Nets, actually, which is going to be a lot of fun here later this week. So we're going to get to see that James Harden, Kevin Durant. I don't think Kyrie is going to show up, but if he does, that would be pretty fun. Um, in the NBA, they kind of prepared for this. They started the season only announcing half the schedule up to the All-Star break because they anticipated having to shut down a few games or postpone a few games uh, due to COVID. So they're going to account for this. Those games will be made up, but that's the reason we haven't played. But we did have two games. And, Andy, you and I actually went to one of those games. So I'm just going to ask you kind of what that experience was like and, uh, you know, if you had any fun there. Well, uh, can we we give a shout-out to to who gave us the plug for the tickets? Of course. Go for it. Yo, shout-out Courtney. Courtney with the plug for the tickets. Very, very pleased. Thank you. Great seats. 
I would say the game was it was like it, it was like the twilight zone. Like when you went there and you walked in, it was you had a weird feeling. There was like nobody there. It was like kind of like a show or a game it ended. There's like nobody there. It was and weird we walked, as hell. It, we walked to our <laughs> it was we walked to our seats and the seat beside me was zip tied shut and there was like caution tape around like it was a crime scene. So you're kind of like, all right, this is like a little weird. We had the mask people coming up hollering at me and Ben. We're just trying to drink beers. Ladies, like, put your mask on. I'm like, ma'am, I'm trying to shotgun this $15 Bud Light. Get out of my face. He's like, put it on in between shotgun. And I'm like, all right, whatever, scoot. The weirdest <laughs> part was like, they had the, the entertainment, like the guy like, Cleveland Cavaliers ball. Like, he was like separated with the mascot with the three cheerleaders and they did not look excited to be there at all. They're like, let's give it up to the Ch Cleveland cheerleaders dance squad. And they're like doing some TikTok dance. And I could see their face through the master. Like, why is this our night to be here at the, at the game? I don't want to be here. And they're, they're like, they're doing their dances and I felt so bad. And then they did the dance cam like, uh Oh, it's the dance cam. And normally at any game, people would be going insane. Like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm dancing. Everybody looked like, nah, just like go to the next person. <laughs> Nobody wanted to dance. It was like, it was like a funeral. And the weird, here's the weirdest part. They, they pumped in crowd noise. So like, say like somebody made a layup. You're, you're losing my 50 points. It doesn't matter. Somebody makes a layup. Like, oh, layup, two points. And you look around, nobody's clapping. And then they have like, and I'm looking, I'm like, who the fuck is screaming for a layup? We're down by 30 points. And it's like there's the problem. Make crowd noise. It was so weird. Now, again, once again, shout out Courtney. I appreciate it. I will come to any game. You plug us for tickets. You're absolutely amazing. You'll have to come to Pittsburgh. We'll go to some Pirates and Steelers games. Not hockey, because that's not a sport. But it was the weirdest thing. Ben, what did you what did you think? It, of the game? it was very weird. Like I love going to Cavs games. It definitely didn't help that we lost by like 30 and none of our right. players were in. So I think that probably changed the vibe a little bit. But I was going to mention the dance cam. Super, like, just weird. They kept going and people were like, <laughs> not, they're just waving, just waving, not dancing. The only thing, so, like, they were pumping in crowd noise, but when they weren't, there was only one guy that we could hear, and he was, like, seven rows behind us, and he just kept yelling, Donovan Mitchell, I hate you! And I was like, dude, Donovan Mitchell is the better than anyone on our team. And we are getting murdered right now. So, like, but, like, every time Mitchell touched the ball, I was like, did he, like, hook up with your wife or something? Like, what, what happened? That was funny. That was funny. So, you know, it, at the end of the day, I still had fun. But it just, yep. it was so, it just, it felt like, Andy said, like, Twilight Zone. Just very weird. It was, like, the amount of people that would be at a high school basketball game, but in, like, this huge, yeah, like, like, NBA arena. I would say, like, 50. Pro would you say 1500 or less i think I, probably yeah i think that you could they could get up to 2000 or something but i i don't remember the exact number but it was just very very weird so yeah the only other game there was one other game we played and that was on friday against the knicks and andre drummond freaking went off this was actually a close game we ended up winning um but andre drummond he had a career high 33 points and he also grabbed 23 rebounds that's an insane stat that's yeah. the first Cavalier to have a 30-20 game since guess who, Ted? Uh, LeBron James. Carlos Boozer. Uh, <laughs> in 2004. Get that name out of here. <laughs> in 2004. That's the last person to do that. It, it stopped a three-game losing streak for the Cavs. So Andre Drummond, you know, shout out to him. Just he he is putting up these numbers that like are just absolutely insane. So I mean, I we'll see if we can keep him. I just I think he's going to want too much money. It doesn't quite match our timeline. But anything, Ted, stand out for you from this past week? Yeah, it was just crazy in that Knicks game. We only played eight guys, and yeah. one of them was Dean Wade, who played two minutes. So right. we basically <laughs> had a seven man rotation. So for us to win that game is honestly pretty impressive because all of our starters were over forty plus minutes. Yeah, um, and it's hard to win when you're playing that many minutes. And that's part of what they were saying with uh, bringing Jared Allen and Prince in. It's just going to deepen our bench. And, like, Drummond just needs a little bit of help. So, 
Yeah, Drummond's been playing outstanding. I'm assuming we're going to trade him after making that trade for Jared Allen. I, I think you're it. right. I think he probably wants too much money. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him get moved at some point moving forward. And at that point, you know, whatever you get, unless the only reason we wouldn't is if we really are in the playoff hunt and we really yeah. want to, you know, try to make a little push there. But we'll see. We can't predict the future. We, we don't have those crystal balls. Um, yeah. So it's going to be hard to play him, though, with Jared Allen and once Love comes back. Larry Nance. Nance. Yeah, right. that's going to be uh, it's going to be a log jam there at the big at the big spots. So didn't Jared Allen play for the Vikings? That sounds like a different uh, person. <laughs> yeah, I think he's a defensive end. And he would do this after he would sack somebody. Mm. I just remember <laughs> Randy Moss. That's the only Viking I remember. That's <laughs> well, Ted, hey, uh, we're, we're getting uh, ready to wrap this up here. You want to give us your obscure calf of the week? Let's see if uh, see if Andrew and I can get this. I've got yeah. really good faith that Andy's going to get it. He knows his calves. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this guy played three games on the calves in Ooh, 07 and 08. <laughs> Three games. Uh, he okay. was a center. And he never played in the NBA again after the three games with the Cavs. But and before. He was the, or before. He played three games with the Cavs. That was it. And he was uh-huh. the first legally deaf player to score in the NBA. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've got nothing. That, three games in the NBA. And, and he, and he was, but he was deaf. He was uh, the first deaf player to ever score in the NBA. That's Alan the Keller. <laughs> yes, Allard. <laughs> How did Lance you know? Allard. They suited uh, Helen up for three games. Helen <laughs> Keller from downtown. She scored, but it was in the wrong hoop. <laughs> Still counts. <laughs> points are points. <laughs> well, hey, uh, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. Andy, thank you for joining us. We always have a good old time when you come on. Uh, Ted, anything that you want to say before we we wrap this up? Yeah, thanks for listening, guys. And never forget, the Warriors blew a 3-1 lead. Yes, they did. Ted, Ted, who was the the person? Oh, good point. Lance Allard. Lance Allard. (laughs) Oh. Who? I thought I I was right. Who? Who? I thought you said Lance Allard. Oh, no, I said Helen Keller. (laughs) That sounds actually very similar. That sounds extremely similar. So yeah. that hey, shout out to Lance you for Allard. That, yeah. Lance Allard, yeah. <laughs> Man. All right, guys. Well, yeah, hey, tune in next week. We're gonna have all kinds of fun. We'll we'll learn a little bit more about Ted's love life. <laughs> <laughs> or lack thereof. Second. It's over. It's over. Cleveland is a city of champions once again.